Good Sunday afternoon to everyone. It is Sunday, January the 17th, 2021. It is currently 4.52 p.m. Central Time. And once again, we're going to turn to a Bible study exercise on our words. Yes, we're going to look at our words, what the Bible has to say about our words, because we need a biblical perspective on our words, because there's a lot of words that's been yelled and screamed and posted on social media that I don't think reflects a biblical perspective on our words. So I've been doing this little mini series on basically Bible study exercises on our words. Hopefully you found them beneficial. Hopefully you've listened to all of them. Hopefully you've done the work that I've asked you to do, and hopefully they have helped you. They've helped others. Uh, you know, and any feedback you want to provide on them, please let me know because I I think this is a very important study. I mean, right now I know there's a lot of arguing and discussion discussing within culture and within Christianity about freedom of speech and people trying to stop our speech and they're trying to silence us. But I think we need instead of worrying and fighting about that right now. We need to at least, I'll put it this way, you can be concerned about that, and if you want, you know, and obviously want to do everything we can to defend our freedom to speak, but at the same time, I think we need to be making sure that we, we give the same attention to examining our words, examining our speech, and ensuring that we are conducting ourselves in a godly way, not in a way that is consistent with your political party or with your friends or with your acquaintances, but a speech that is glorifying to God. That is what we must all strive for and think about. And so that's why we've been doing this mini series. And our and, and the last live episode that I did, I don't know when you will hear this, but in the previous live episode that I did today, we talked about the new perspective on Paul. And what was interesting about that whole thing, we listened to a discussion about the new perspective on Paul that was held on the White Horse End podcast. And what was so frustrating is they used a lot of words, but I don't think they really, they didn't really give us anything to discuss. So that, that's how sometimes we can use words and don't really accomplish anything. Sometimes we can use words and do great damage. Sometimes we can use words to cover up the truth. Um, there's all kinds of things we can do with our words. So we have been talking about them. If you'll remember, this is these are some of the passages we've looked at and some of the things that we have talked about. Uh, we we kind of talked a little bit about the importance of words, and we looked at Matthew 12, 30 to 37 to discuss that. We talked about kind of the right kind of words. We looked at Psalm 19, 7 through 14 to discuss that. That was an interesting discussion. We looked at prover- We looked at the wrong kind of words. What are the wrong kinds of words that we should try to avoid? And we talked about, uh, we looked at Proverbs chapter 18, verses 6 through 8. Today, we're going to look at, I think we're going to call this, I think we'll call this dangerous words. We're going to look at dangerous words. I think that's what we'll call this. I, I can change my mind at any time. Time, all right. And again, this is done as a Bible study exercise. So I invite you to participate and then I'm going to get you to a certain point, And then I say, here you go, go do it. And someone today, um, and our, and our study this morning on the imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis, they sent me their work on uh, the virtue of fortitude. Very well done. In fact, I shared it, uh, with, uh, some people in the church. So, because it was very well done and, uh, I thought it was helpful and I thought it would hopefully motivate them to do the work as well. So thank you for sending that. I, I always appreciate when people do the study that I'm asking them to do. It's always help, helpful. And I know what you're saying. If I did all of the studies you give me to do, I would never be able to do anything else, including breathing. Okay. You, you may have a point. But please never think, if you put it this way, if your kids ever say, I'm bored, you say, oh, you're bored? Guess what I have for you? I have some Bible study exercises that you can start working on now, uh, on right now, thanks to, uh, well, the Theology Central podcast, okay? And then they're going to go, I hate the Theology Central podcast. Yeah, nobody should ever be bored. So if you're ever looking for something to do, just go back and look at the Bible study exercises, okay? So here we go. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Um, we, we, got a lot of, we got a lot of verses here. We'll see how we want to do this. 2 Peter chapter 2, all right? Let's, we're, we're just going to work through this. And I think verse 1 is really going to be the key. Maybe, maybe verse 2, 3. Now verse 3, 
I think one through three is going to be the key. Yeah, I don't, I don't, if we try to get through all 18 verses, I think we'll end up in, uh, well, we'll end up with an exposition of Second Peter chapter two, all right? So Second Peter chapter two, all right? Second Peter chapter two. If I said chapter three, I apologize. Second Peter chapter two, verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Now this was Peter warning believers, warning the church that they were there was going to be false prophets, false teachers among them. Again, I've stated it before, the false teachers within the church to me are a far greater threat than all of the things that we get so upset about about liberals and the world and politicians and and all and the LGBTQ and and Marxists and socialists, all the things that we get so upset about. The greatest threat to the church always, in, in my estimation, arises from within the church. Those who claim Christianity wrap themselves in a robe of fraudulent righteousness and say, I'm here to give you a message from God. And and it is, well, it's, it's lies. It's a false teaching. All right, so let's go through this again. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false pr- teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. When it says bring in damnable heresies, Damnable heresies are dangerous words. Damnable heresies. How are they going to bring them in? They're going to bring them in with the words they preach, with what they teach. So the dangerous words, damnable heresies, those are the kinds of words that are dangerous that we need to be able to identify and we need to ensure we're not speaking. We need to make sure we're not speaking damnable heresies And we also need to ensure that we have the skill to identify a damnable heresy, to be able to to see it, to spot it, to point it out. And if you can't, then you're, then you're, well, you're in trouble, spiritually speaking. So they're going to bring in damnable heresies. Look at verse two. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. All right. So, And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The way of truth will be spoken evil of. In fact, let's look at this at 2 Peter 2, verse 2. Give me a second here. I'm going to lean over and grab another Bible. 2 Peter 2, verse 2. Give me one second. We're going to look at this. We're going to look at this in a different translation. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it reads this way. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Disre, disrepute, disrepute, all right? Um, uh, they're, so they're going to follow the depraved ways and will bring the way of truth into dis, disrepute. So um, the, I think... I'm trying to connect it with words. I think the idea is that many are going to follow their ways. And so by reason, the truth is going to be spoken evil of. So so damnable heresies, think of it this way. Damnable heresies or dangerous words, dangerous words lead to the truth being spoken of as evil. Dangerous words or damnable heresies lead people to then speak evil of the truth, right? Damnable heresies or dangerous words lead the truth to being spoken of in a evil way, in a, in a way of, of, of treated in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a wrong kind of way, treated as an evil thing, treated as a bad thing, treated as a negative thing, right? Dangerous words leads the truth to being hated, to being rejected, to being spoken evil of. That's what we have to be aware of here, all right? Um, And so, okay, so let's go through this. So we have damnable heresies. um, And then as a reason of these damnable heresies, many are going to follow their way. And then by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And look at verse three. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. 
Please note, feigned words. Feigned words. That's an interesting. Let's see how this translation handles it. Feigned words. Let me look at this. I'm gonna I had I closed the Bible. That's okay. I'm gonna open it back up. Second Peter. Here we go. Chapter two. And let's look at verse three. In their greed, these false teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. Fabricated stories fabricated stories. So let's think of, let's think of then, let's do this. Let's think of dangerous words. All right. Let's, let's say, let's do this. Dangerous words. And there are three kinds of dangerous words. I think we can kind of see here. Damnable heresies. That's a danger. Those are dangerous words. Um, when the truth is spoken of in an evil way, when, when you speak of truth in an evil way, you speak of truth as it is evil. Those are dangerous words. And then number three, feigned words. Let's do a little study on the word feigned words. They said fabricated stories. Let's, I mean, let's do a, a little bit of work here. Let's pull up the Blue Letter Bible app. Let's pull up the uh, Blue Letter Bible app. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. Let's look up this idea of feigned words, of feigned words. Let me find here. Let me look for it. Shall they with feigned, all right, the words there is just logos. The word feigned here is this. Strong's G 4112, plastos, plastos. Plastos. And it's interesting, the definition here is molded, artificial, fictitious, right? It's used uh, as formed as from clay, wax, or stone. So in other words, with the, with the words that they mold, they, they shape, they, they mold them and as a fictitious or false or made up story, made up words or fraudulent words. So let's go through the dangerous kinds of words that are articulated here. Let's, let's break it down this way. Dangerous words, damnable heresies. All right. Damnable heresies, false teaching, false teaching. Second, when truth is evil spoken of, when people begin to speak evil of the truth, that is a dangerous words. And number three, feigned words. Um, uh, and to make, make sure, yeah. And, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. They, tell, they make up stories. They make up stories to ultimately manipulate you so they can make a merchandise out of you. They can benefit from you. They tell you stories to manipulate you. Those are all dangerous words. Damnable heresies, when the truth is spoken of in an evil way, and feigned words, fictitious words, things that are made up, all right? I, and I want you to consider that. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to read kind of a, a commentary on this section and, and I want us to, we'll see what they have to offer. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a, an, an assignment here. But let's, let's consider these words. The words of false prophets are dangerous words, feigned words, hypocritical words spoken, uh, spoken with the intent to deceive the hearer. Because of these false words and the words of, the, the words of truth are evil spoken of. This text is prophetic and clearly indicates the fact that error will infect the churches in the last days. These false teachers, privily or secretly, bring in their dangerous words, which God identifies as damnable heresies. And so doing, they bring upon themselves swift destruction. Divine judgment lies ahead for all who speak against the Lord and his word. Sadly, verse 2 of our text reveals that many shall follow their pernicious ways. Part of the reason uh, why these false teachers enjoy such great success is because of the attractive manner in which they present their damnable heresies. They speak great swelling words uh, and uh, that have a tremendous appeal to the flesh. Look at, let's see, is it verse 18 is where they get that phrase from? Yeah, look at 2 Peter uh, 2.18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, 
those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. There's swelling words, swelling words. We, we, could, we could put that one down, all right? Uh, so they, they said the, the reason they are so attractive and they, they, they draw so many people away is they speak great swelling words that have tremendous appeal to the flesh. Colossians 2.4 explains that enticing words are designed to beguile the unwary, um, and Romans 16.18 warns that good words and fair speech deceive the simple. The believer must exercise spiritual discernment so as not to be taken in, in by these words. God warns that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse in the last days, deceiving and being deceived. The child of God can observe this fact on every hand, yet most believers show little or no concern about these false teachers and their dangerous words. Indeed, the majority of Christians today actually find fault with those who expose the unbiblical rhetoric of deceivers within and without the church. But if the Lord speaks against dangerous words, then should we. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Let's identify dangerous words. All right, let's identify dangerous words. According to 2 Peter chapter 2, all right, 2 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 1, we can identify three kinds of dangerous words. Damnable heresies, words spoken against the truth, and feigned words. Those are three kinds of dangerous words that you need to ensure that you are not engaged in speaking and that you can detect and hear. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to start thinking, and, and they just they gave you a number of, of, of passages to reference. Let me go, I'm just going to give you some of the references they gave. Second Peter 2, 18, swelling words. Colossians 2, 4, enticing words. Romans 16, 18, good words and fair speeches. Now, you can write those down, but I want you to find five verses that you would say, this warns of dangerous words, of dangerous words. What are, or, or, or give me, so yeah, fine, let's do this. Find four, ver, find four verses that speak of dangerous words. You're like, here are some words that are dangerous. Here are words that we need to avoid. These are dangerous words. And then find me one biblical example one, it could be a, you know, a, a narrative, like a, a passage where it has four or five verses. Find me a, an account, a story in the Bible where, where the truth is being spoken of as evil. So four verses that kind of that, that kind of takes this idea and gives us some more dangerous words. What are some dangerous words? Damnable heresies. What are some dangerous words? Uh, what, what are some uh, dangerous words? We, uh, we have... Uh, let me go back to 2 Peter 2. We have damnable words. We have uh, the truth being spoken evil of. And number three, we have, uh, what's the third one? Uh, feigned words, feigned words, all right? So w- dangerous words are damnable heresies, the truth being spoken evil against, and feigned words. Those are three kinds of dangerous words. Find me four verses that speak of other kinds of dangerous words, and then find me an example of where the truth is being spoken of as evil. That's, that's your Bible study exercise. All right? Dangerous words. What are the dangerous words? Number one, damnable heresies. Number two, dangerous words is when you're speaking evil of the truth. And number three, feigned words. Fictitious stories told to manipulate people. A lot of Christians told a lot of fictitious stories. They have during COVID, they've made up, they've just shared lies and made up stories. A lot of people did it in regards to the election and Christians should be ashamed of themselves. Those are dangerous words because they hurt people. There's negative consequences to made up stories. All right, so four verses that give dangerous words. Think of, now you can, Look, if you can't come up with any, I gave you, I don't know how many did I give you. I gave you how many? Let me see here. I gave you uh, 2 Peter 2.18. There's one. I gave you Colossians 2.4. There's two. And I gave you Romans 16.18. There's three. All right? So you just need one more. If you can't come up, but try to come up with your own. Try to come up with your own. And then try to find that example, that example of someone speaking evil of the truth. Give me an example. I can already think of a bunch of them in the Bible 
That's where, and please note this, damnable heresies, though. That's what you need to understand. How do you find, how do you reach an area where people begin to speak evil of the truth within the church or within Christianity? It's damnable heresies. Damnable heresies come in, and the next thing you know, you're speaking evil of the truth. That's how you get there. All right, there's your Bible study exercise. I could do more of it for you, but I'm not because it's a Bible study exercise. All right, there you go. Enjoy. If you want to send me your work, please do so. Newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, members of Victory Baptist Church. That chat function works perfectly. It does. So feel free to share your thoughts. Also, um, we are working on getting a search function. Some of the young people uh, in the church, let me make sure. Let me go here to our website. If you go to vbc66.org, vbc66.org, that's vbc66.org, vbc66.org, that's our website. Click on the little drop down menu. Depending on what, uh, if, if you're using probably a phone, you're going to see three little lines. Click on that and it's going to bring down a drop down menu. Click, in, uh, click on listen now and you're going to see a search bar. That will search all of our archives, podcasts, sermons. I think the Bible Institute, I think it should pull up everything right there. We're also going to have a section on VBC that just says search and which you can click on that to search the database as well. Uh, obviously, we have the pod page, theologycentral.net. It also has a search function. We're just going to, we're trying to create it where if you want to look for something, it's yeah, an easy database to search and find. So give it a shot vbc66.org, vbc66.org. Go ahead and check it out. Do some searching. See if it works for you. If you don't like the search uh, function, um, I'll let the young people in the church know that you called them names and that you told me that they were dumb and that they should never try to do... No, I won't do that. I won't do that. No, if you if you do have a, a constructive criticism... <laughs> If it's mean, I'll just take it and won't tell them, okay? But if it's a constructive, I will take it in and say, hey, could we do this? And then see if they can do that for me because they're the ones who built it. They're the ones who do all, maintain it. I don't do anything with that website. I do all the maintaining of the theologycentral.net pod page and the VBC pod page. Um, I, I, I'm the one who maintains those and, and works on those and trying to change those and doing what I can with those. So you're like, you have the VBC pod page, the Theology Central pod page, and a church website. Yeah, we, we, we try to get our stuff everywhere out there that we can. That's what we try to do. All right, there you go. That concludes another Sunday of broadcasting. I'm very disappointed in the new perspective on Paul discussion. I am very, very disappointed. I really thought that was going to be good. And that turned out to be garbage. That was, a, that, was a, that was an hour of words with no benefit. Hopefully this Bible study exercise on words has been, Bible study exercise on words has been beneficial. You are the one who makes that determination. You can give me your determination and your final judgment by emailing me at newsif at yahoo.com. Everyone have a great night. I'm going home. God bless.